Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG. Today's question, uh, interesting one regarding operating two radios on the same frequency band, comes from Joe, KE8IFR. And here's his question. He says he's been a ham since 2017, congratulations, and have a general class license. Started this hobby late in life at 71 and am learning by the seat of my pants. In other words, he's going out there and trying things, and that is probably the best way to learn. My question concerns RF interference. I have two IC7300 rigs. Now the ICOM7300, which is this radio right here, um, is the standard radio for the reference design. Okay, and this radio I understand probably close to 100,000 of them have been sold as extremely popular radio. This is a great starter radio. You can start with any radio, but this is a great starter radio of the kind that will probably take you 10 years to outgrow. Okay, so he has two of them. One I operate on FT8, that's digital mode down at the bottom of the band. The other on voice. When the digital rig transmits on FT8, it interferes with the voice rig. I'm not surprised, and I will tell you why. I have a USB cable with a choke on it, but still get problems. I put chokes on my feed lines and just about all the other lines. As I'm electronically challenged, I'm at a loss for a solution, hoping you could give me some ideas. I enjoy your videos and have learned quite a lot about ham radio from them. Thanks, Joe, KE8IFR. So, we have two radios, two HF radios operating at the same time. Now, there are a couple things going on here. If you're operating one radio on one band, say 40 meter FT8, and you're operating sideband on another band, say 20, it is more feasible to have one not interfere with the other. Operating them on the same band is pretty much out of the question. And let me show you why. What we have here, if this is uh, zero right here, and this is your output here. If you pick a operating frequency, we'll call it F naught, you put out a strong frequency on that, and then you've got whatever sidebands you have, okay, and usually the carrier's not there when you're doing single sideband. But what happens is there's what's called digital noise or hash that goes out like this quite a bit. Now, the unfortunate thing, if this is 100 watts, this can still be like S7, which is a well of a lot less, but it's S7, and it goes quite a ways outside the band. And your other receiver, and we'll call it F1, right here, picks this up in its passband. Now, why does it do this? Well, there are two basic kinds of a VFOs, a VFO, variable frequency oscillator, that are in modern use today, all involve a crystal, and that usually is shown like this. Okay, and this goes into an oscillator, and there are two types. There's the phase lock loop, and then there's the direct division. I can't remember the official name for it. I'm going to just call it division. This oscillates at a very high frequency. Okay, and then you use digital techniques to divide and multiply, etc., this thing to get the frequency that you want. And this becomes what goes to the modulator. Okay, and this is the, the basic circuit. Now, the way these things work, there is a frequency. We'll call it the frequency to which it is tuned. Okay, it will tend to run up a little bit until it hits a stop. And then the circuit just says, okay, slow down a bit. So it slows down until it gets to here. And then the circuit says, speed up a little bit. And it gets up to here and, and it keeps dithering back and forth inside an extremely narrow passband. However, the problem is that the dither rate is high. The dither rate can be at many megahertz. All right. So what is this right here? This is called oscillator noise. It has a variety of other names too. But the point is that this thing does not find a frequency and sit on it. 
it is constantly dithering back and forth in response to a phase lock loop. What the phase lock loop does is it looks at this tone and compares it with the tone that you want via a frequency counter, frequency divider, and it will cause this thing, you know, you can add a little capacitance in if you want, which will cause this thing to go up or add a little inductance will cause it to go down. Usually it's just adding capacitance the other way. But what happens is you get this and it's so-called phase noise. Since the dithering takes place at multiple megahertz, you've got this frequency with just a very slight jitter in it. And because it's done so frequently, it multiplies that out, usually across the entire band. Now, this is something that is measured in QST. There's a graph for it in every QST of any HF rig that they take a look at. They'll take a look at the phase noise. And the phase noise is usually very small. It's like 60 dB down or more, but it does tend to be extremely broadband. So if this is 100 watts, this is 50 dBm, right? 100 watts is 50 dBm. If this thing is 60 dB below it, okay, this is minus 10 dBm, which is a well of a strong signal for a receiver to receive. Now your receiver doesn't receive it because it's just looking at the strong stuff. But this is being put out every time you transmit. So this is why at field day, if you have a transmitter on, say, 20 meters, and it's on Morse code, you cannot have another transmitter 20 meters that is voice, okay? Because the phase noise between the two get tangled up in each other. Now, there are some radios that are renowned for their ability to withstand phase noise. The Elecraft series, can do some fantastic things with phase noise. Most of the main people like Yesu Kenwood ICOM, they have the phase noise, it's there. Now, the ARRL is starting something called Clean Signal Initiative, CSI. And it's, uh, instead of CSI Miami, we'll call it uh, CSI Newington. Okay, what they're trying to do with this Clean Signal Initiative is get rid of this kind of stuff down here and keep that from transmitting. Because if you've got another radio that's fairly near, this can be very loud. If this is minus 10 dB, that's S9 plus many, many, many dB, and it will blow any nearby uh, radio out of the water. Now, if you've got radios on two different frequencies, like say one on 40, one on 20, you'll get less of this because this tapers off as you get away here. That means that you could, if you want, put out a filter here that's a notch filter. This one is 40. Put a notch filter on the antenna that keeps it from transmitting on 20 and vice versa. Okay? So this is what's happening with your radios. Now, you say, but wait a minute, this is a brand new modern great radio. This really is a great radio. It's a, a radio. This is a radio that I really like. But it will put out the phase noise if you transmit right there. Now, I'll just show you a picture of what's going on. Let's turn over here to this. This is the 20 meter band right here, okay? Uh, on a software defined radio that's on a separate antenna from the antenna that I've got this thing on. Now I'm gonna put out a CW signal on this radio. And I want you to see what happens. This is on 14146, which is right there. See all of these signals right here. Now I'm gonna put out another signal like this and look what happens. Even though there's no connection between the two, we're about 25 dB down, dB milliwatt. Okay, this is the signal that I'm putting out with CW. Notice all the little garbage down at the bottom and it spreads out. Notice now even this signal here and this signal here get wiped out, okay? Because we go up so much that this other signal can't be heard. You get a little bit of that one there, but, and of course here's the FT8. 
But this is what is happening to your radio. You got two ICOMs next to each other. Now, just for kicks, let's change the frequency of this to seven. Okay, now I want you to look at this. I'm receiving on 20 meters, okay, and I'm gonna transmit on 40 meters. There is the first harmonic. Let's see, we're on 7080, so this would be 14. 060 would be the first harmonic. Let's just move this down a little bit there. It's not so obvious. There we go. Now I want you to notice what is happening. This is normal, 20 meters. You can tune in. There's a whole bunch of sideband signals, a whole bunch of FT8. Now I'm just going to put out a signal, 100 watts CW on 40 meters. Oh dear, look what happened. Here's the first harmonic of it. Here's the phase noise around it. Now notice that that phase noise also pulls way out here, okay? Pulls way out there. Then we go back to our normal, and it will blot out nearby signals, okay? This is the second harmonic of the signal we're transmitting, and what it's doing, you can see right here, it's just obliterating the band. It's obliterating the band. This is the problem that you have with radios where you've made no other method to get these things from interfering with each other. Okay. Okay, Joe, I think what we've seen here should answer your questions. And the fact is that a radio transmitter that normally appears very clean, like the ICOM 7300, is not as clean as it seems. And this is what the ARRL's Clean Signal Initiative is going after, is this extra phase noise that goes out to the side. That's one of many things that it's going after. If you're transmitting on the one radio on one frequency and you want to talk sideband on another, you're going to have to put something in there on either antenna that really diminishes the amount of noise that the other one is going to hear. Now this may seem odd and you've run into this problem at field day. You know why there is a 1,000 foot limit between the two furthest stations, and that is because of this problem right here exactly. So if you're gonna have a station on 20 over here, you put the station over here on 40, as far away as you can get it to reduce the amount of phase noise and hope that the phase noise that's left fades into the band noise, all right? This is a little understood part of amateur radio. So what you are trying to do is operate FT8 at the same time that you are operating sideband, either on the same or adjacent or nearby bands, as soon as that FT81 transmits, it's going to start putting interference in with the other one, even though it's on a, on a band. We've demonstrated that here today. This is, at this point in the amateur radio state of the art, this is perfectly normal. So if you want to do FT8, do it on a lower power, okay? Uh, on a different antenna on the far side of your yard. Maybe do the FT8 antenna vertical and the other one horizontal. Do everything you can to separate those signals from each other. So I will say to you, best of luck. I hope you can get this all worked out to where it works for you. And until we next meet, 73.